Now, uh, one thing I would like to swing back around to, of course, is we were using some of the redirects, which is, it, it's, a, it's really just a quick way, right? It's a quick way to make a file. It's a quick way to stick some data into the end of the file, but it's not the same thing as what happens if I had to open up the file and go and make changes to it and edit the file. So yeah, we're not gonna be using commands like that to be able to edit a file. So we certainly need to see some. We definitely need to see some commands to be able to make changes to files. And so let's see if I can go back into that example one file and add the hello world back in. Now, what I always emphasize when you're learning about how to edit files using just a command line only interface, there's two good applications to be able to learn to do this. And I, I definitely emphasize learn both because some distributions might just come with one and some might just come with the other. It, it's not necessarily guaranteed that you're going to be able to use the one that you find to be your favorite, let's say. So um, now the first one I'm going to show is called Nano. All right, so Nano is a command-driven application that allows you to edit files all right here inside your terminal. All right, and I'm just a warning, some distributions of Linux, they don't necessarily come with Nano. All right, all right, either way, let's see how this works. So the way you can use Nano is you can type out Nano space and then what's the file that you want to edit. Now we already have some files, right? I have some files, something like my example one file that's now tucked away inside my James folder. So you just have to give the file path. So where, where is that example one file? It's like, well, it's in tilde slash desktop slash James slash example one. Like that's the file that I want to edit. And if you run this on an existing file, what you should see is, well, you'll see the contents of that file. And it even shows you like up at the top, it shows you like, here's the file path to the thing that you're opening and interacting with right now. It's like, okay, great. All right. It also tries to show you at the bottom, like here's some, some menu style options, which we'll get to in just a second. But for the most part, Nano, it's, it's kind of like Notepad. It's a pretty simple, straightforward, like I can go to the end of the file and just start type more stuff. Like, yeah, I, I could come in here and I could start editing the file. I said I wanted to add the hello world back in. So maybe I'll hit enter, right? And add back in the hello world, you know, add in whatever messages I need to add. But it's, it's a very simple, straightforward text editor, but it works entirely here inside the terminal. All right. And it's a great thing to kind of learn and, and understand how to use when you want to just quick go and edit a file this way. Sure, this will work. Okay. Now, the things that are really critical about learning how to use Nano from the start, you want to realize that there are a lot of keyboard shortcuts that are built into these command driven applications like, like Nano. So it shows you some of them here at the bottom. Some of these are some of the keyboard shortcuts that allow you to interact with the program. It's not like they have drop down menus. Your mouse is not going to be very, very useful in, in programs like these so it's this is all about the keyboard and all about the commands and a lot of the commands that you give to nano they start with the control button so you would hold control and then press some button and that's what a lot of these little hats are these little up arrows those little hats those things oftentimes mean when you're in Linux they oftentimes mean hold control all right, hold control and then and then press a button. So the I think the basic things that you definitely have to learn in order to use Nano properly, at least at a minimum, is how do you come in and make changes and save your changes? And how do you come into a file? And if you screw things up, how do I discard my changes? How do I just go back to how things were? Those are kind of like the two absolute minimum things you need to learn about Nano. So, okay, so we nanoed into the file. We've made some changes. I think the changes are good and I want to save them. How do I do it? It's like, well, you have to start doing the exit process. It's kind of like going up to a program and clicking the X and it warns you, like, do you want to save your changes? Yes or no? Like, that's pretty much what we're going to go through. All right. So the way you start that is by pressing control X that will trigger the exit. All right. So sure, I can press control X and it's going to say, do you want to save Y or N? It's like, well, yes, I like my changes. I'm going to save my changes. I'll press Y. And now it gives you the option. Do you want to change the file of where you're actually saving this to? Or do you just want to save it to the existing file? And it's like, well, no, I just want to, I open this file. I want to save it to this file as well. I'm not looking to recreate a new one or anything like that. So you don't have to change anything. You can just press enter. All right, so you have this very common keyboard shortcut of control X, Y, enter, control X, Y, enter, control X, Y, enter. That's a very good command to kind of beat yourself over the head until you remember control X, Y, enter. That's a nice sequence to be able to save your changes. All right, and so now if I try catting out that file, right, if I try catting out tilde slash desktop slash James slash example one, it's like, hey, there's my changes, right? I got the hello world part. I got the type, 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 more stuff. Like, yeah, sure, it worked. 
Okay, I was able to go into the file and I was able to save the changes. Um, let's go into the file again and let, let's see what it's like if I tried to like not save my changes. All right, let, let's, see, let's see an example of that. So if I nano back into the file, I'll nano into James slash example one. That's where the file is from where I am right now. Sure, just doing a relative reference. And, and what I'm emphasizing here is what if we had like the cat jump on the keyboard problem, right? The, the cat jumps on the keyboard and you got all sorts of like, I just screwed this file up terribly. A whole bunch of, okay, that, that's bad that's not good all right so if you ever have a file that you're interacting with and you accidentally make a bunch of changes and it's like i just want to go back to how it was before i got here i think i'm making things worse it's like well you can still start the exit process right i still press Control x but this time don't hit y right this time hit n for no to say well i'm going to discard my changes and so Control x n is a way that now when we cat out this file again, we'll see it's like, yeah, all those changes I just made to the file, none of them actually got saved. So useful little tricks to be able to understand at least the basics of how do you get into a file and how do you modify a file? It's like use nano, you can then give the file path, Control x y enter will save your changes, Control x n will be able to allow you to quit the file without actually saving any of your changes. So good things to understand and like I said, Nano is a nice quick little utility to just get in the file quick, make some changes and then get out of the file, which is oftentimes what we have to do with things like configuration files, which we'll get to in, uh, in future videos. Um, let's see another way though, because as I mentioned, some distributions don't come with Nano. They don't all have Nano. We pop open our scent machine right now, it probably is not going to have Nano on it so we should see at least one other utility as well so another useful command line utility that allows you to get into files and modify files is uh, called vi vi um, there's another version of it an improved version called vim so some computers will just have vi some will actually have the improved version vim um, so vim um, but either way you know kind of potato potato uh, they end up for, for the most part at the start when you're just starting out learning about these you know they're pretty much the same program there isn't going to be many major noticeable differences between vi and vim at least when you start okay so nevertheless uh, uh let, let's try this command and this will be very similar to nano you're going to say all right i'm about to start up a text editor what's the file that i want to edit so maybe I'll try again on my example one file. Let's see how I can make some more changes to the example one file, but this time we won't use nano. We'll use the VI program. Sure, let's give it a try. So I could say VI space. Now what's the file path to example one? It's like, well, I could do slash home, slash sandbox, slash desktop, slash James, slash example one. Sure, I type out the full thing. That's, that's the file that I wanna go and edit. Sure, that'll work. And now we can see, hey, there's all my data, right? There's the data that's in the file, but it looks a little different, right? We didn't have that control menu at the bottom, right? Kind of just has all these empty tildes. It's like, what, what's going on here? What VI works certainly a bit different, or Vim it definitely looks different. How does this work? Now, one major change from something like Nano as opposed to using something like Vim um, would be to understand that when you're in Nano, you're ready to start typing. It wants you to just go ahead and start edit, start editing everything. And if you want to initiate some sort of keyboard shortcut or some type of command, they have like Control and Alt and Shift and different keys like that that would allow you to do so. With VI, it's kind of the opposite. When you start up a file, it, it kind of is waiting for what's your keyboard shortcut. So you gotta be real careful on the keyboard as soon as you open a file using something like VI because there are a whole bunch of keyboard shortcuts that just pressing single keys without even holding things like Control or Alt, like you definitely could start triggering a lot of the keyboard shortcuts by just pressing things. Um, I'm definitely not gonna go through a lot of the keyboard shortcuts that are built into these. I'm gonna say, you can just go look it up online, right? Go, go to some whatever favorite internet search you wanna do, learn how to use VI, learn how to use Vim, and you'll, you'll find entire websites that have pages and pages of different shortcuts that you can do they have a lot of a lot of keyboard shortcuts that you can give either to vi or or, or to nano both both of these programs have a lot of commands that are built into them um, but nevertheless you want to learn at least the basics like how do i make changes all right and so one of the most basic things you need to do with vi is learn you need to get into insert mode and to actually make changes to a file and the way you enter insert mode is by pressing i so the I button, when you're just sitting here in VI, I can press I, and this will change at the bottom, and it now says insert. So when I'm in insert mode, now I can come in here and start making more changes, like type more stuff and add 
add more lines of text like i can start adding more things and if you wanted to get to the next line like it shows all these little tildes to show you like the file ends here there is no part of the file here so if you want to make more lines using something like vi you have to kind of come to the end and then hit enter like now i've got another line and like here's more lines of stuff more data more 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 like whatever you, you kind of get the idea all right so you definitely can come into using something like vi and edit a lot of your files right here in the command line but you got to remember to go to insert mode now when it comes time to do effectively that same thing that we were doing in nano like how do i quit and save my changes you got to make sure that you leave insert mode all right when you're at insert mode all those keyboard shortcuts like they're going to start typing right here on the screen so you don't want to be sending keys to vi while you're still in insert mode because it thinks that you want to type right now it's like okay so let's leave insert mode how do you leave insert mode well you press escape so the escape button will have you leave insert mode so pressing i jumps you into insert mode hitting escape that's how you can leave insert mode and now you're no longer in insert mode and we're back to just what's the command you want to type now one of the most useful commands to learn about when we're dealing with something like vi when we're just starting out you want to learn how to save your changes the save changes command is given through the colon all right so let's try that make sure you're not in insert mode and then try typing a colon so do shift and then hit the colon button and there you are and it should pop up a colon down here at the bottom and the colon allows you to give a series of built-in commands and the built-in commands that we want to do are represented just by a single letter each all right so the built-in commands you want to do i want to do a w which is for a write i want to be able to save the changes i want to write the changes to the file and then you want to quit so wq colon wq one of the most useful commands or most common commands when you're changing things using vi or vim it's like just hit colon wq and that will be able to write and quit out of the file let's give it a try so i did my escape and then i did a colon wq we'll hit enter and hey i think it worked Let, let's try catting it out right i'll cat out that same file i'll cat out james slash example one and we'll see like hey yeah there's there's the other data that i added in using the vi instead of just nano right nano added in a few things and then i had, i took it there a little bit further um let's let's use vi again let's go back into the file let's let's see how we could have that same like cat jumps on the keyboard problem when we're in vi if i made a made a bunch of changes and i don't want to save them all right so i could do something like this we'll do vi of james slash example one let's go back into that file and we'll see okay i'll hit i to go to insert mode and just do a whole bunch of typing like type 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 whole bunch of extra stuff okay i just majorly screwed up my file like okay that's bad all right so if you ever make changes to a file and you want to quit without saving your changes all right it's like okay we got to leave insert mode don't be in insert mode this time we want to quit but we want to make sure don't do the w right don't do the right we don't want to write our changes we don't actually want to save them now if you try just doing a colon and then q without the w right to be able to quit it'll give you a warning it'll say hey you made some changes and you didn't actually write them no write since last change it's like hey you made changes and you didn't actually save them are you sure you have to add the exclamation point to kind of confirm like yes these are changes i actually want to keep all right so let's try this again all right so we'll do our colon and this time do a q and then an exclamation point so it's like a force quit i'm going to quit and i'm going to confirm like yes i don't actually want to change uh, save my changes this time so wq will write and quit q exclamation point that'll quit without saving the changes let's give that a try all right so now if i cat the file out again i'll try my cat command and we'll see like yeah the file is still fine things are not completely screwed up when i typed a whole bunch of random stuff all right we so learning how to quit your files and save the changes or learning how to quit and not save them that's really critical to using either of these programs um so what was it for nano nano you had control x y enter or control x n for vi you had your escape and then colon wq or colon q exclamation point some really tricky little things that you definitely want to make sure you make a note of or just use them a whole bunch until it's really drilled into your head and realize hey if you ever type out your command if you ever type out nano and it and it yells back at you and says command not found it's like well then this one isn't built into this particular terminal and you'd have to go and switch and well try vi 
Okay, odds are one of those is going to be uh, available on, on the machines that you're going to be dealing with. So either VI or Nano, I'd say learn to use both, at least have a basic understanding of both so you can edit a file on, on either one if you needed to. If you have a preference, that's fine. It's totally fine to have preferences and have favorites and, and things like that. I know some people that prefer Nano. I know some people that prefer Vim. Like, okay, fine. But I, just learn to use both. Learn, learn, how, learn how to be comfortable using both, at least for the basics. Okay. Um, one last thing that I kind of want to emphasize about editing files is that you also can launch programs right here from the terminal. So just like you were double clicking on those files and kind of opening them up, you can actually launch that GUI based program to go editing a file right here at the terminal if you know the name of the program. All right, and so that that program that kept popping up when we were kind of cheating and double clicking on things, um, that can be called using the gedit command, at least when we're in Ubuntu. So when we're in Ubuntu, if I do gedit, this is a way that I can now open a file using an actual GUI program. So it's not like the GUI's bad. I mean, obviously we're we're going through a lot of this content so we can get better at the command line. But if you've got the GUI available to you and there's something quick you think you could do a little faster with the GUI, it's like yeah, sure, that's not the end of the world. That that's a good thing to do. So let's see how I can open up one of those files and it, it works the same way you just have to pass it the file path like what's the file that you want to open using this program it's like well i want to open tilde slash desktop slash james slash example one like that's the file i want to open and so when you do that it's like hey it goes and launches the gui program and so now i could come in here and make changes and i'd have my mouse and i could go highlighting things and kind of have the benefit of some of the gui gui options you know i have my typical open and save buttons this is certainly going to be much more intuitive you guys will be able to sort of figure this out um but you'll also notice here, so I'm just going to minimize this. I'm not going to close it. You'll also notice what will happen here at your terminal while this is happening. All right, so while this is open and while this is happening, like the, the terminal, this terminal is running this particular program. All right, and so it kind of just sits there. It kind of hangs there. It's not waiting for you to give it the next command. All right, so that is a common thing that happens when you open up terminals. If your terminal starts a program or if it starts some kind of code or loop or something, many times it just sort of sits there. So it's not doing some, it doesn't mean that it's not doing something. It means that it's kind of busy taking care of something you told it to run. All right. Now, the, of course, the good thing to realize is this doesn't mean that you're completely locked out of using your terminal. You can just open another one, right? There's nothing stopping you from doing like open another terminal. And here I am. Now I could start running other commands, right? Like LS and here we go. And now I can continue running commands up here. Well, this one is busy handling the program that I told it to run. And so certainly in future videos and in more complex content, it's definitely important to understand how can I start working with multiple terminals at the same time? Because right, maybe on one terminal I'll be running one activity and one program or one one type of one type of strategy, and then in some other terminal I'll be keeping an eye on something else. I might be monitoring something else with another terminal. All right, and so starting to be able to manage your terminals and keep a track of that stuff that that's definitely really critical to becoming more more proficient at the command line. But nevertheless, there isn't anything right. We're we're just kind of focusing on making changes to files, and there's nothing that I really want to change out of this file using the gedit program. So I'll just kind of click the X here. That's fine. I think you're getting the idea and you see now my terminals all ready back to say all right james what's the next command that you want to run so i think this has been a pretty good introduction to working with some of the basics of files all right so if we hit our history button again just to kind of remember everything real quick it's like we had the touch command to be able to just create a blank file and you could touch a file anywhere on the computer um, we could have things like the echo command echo could redirect data as well um, so we could create files that way, or we could kind of use it as sort of a cheap way to copy things. Um, and we also saw that we could copy data coming from any of our commands, not just from Echo. Um, our, our copy and paste, we got a little bit more practice with that. And then finally, of course, we, we kind of topped it all off by starting to become a bit more proficient using Nano, using VI, and even the, uh, starting uh, some of our GUI programs, such as things like gedit. So we got to definitely take these different skills, continue to practice them in silly little ways that it becomes, if you can really really master some of these silly little techniques, then it just kind of becomes second nature. And when it comes time to accomplish more complex tasks, you just you won't even think about what's the file path or what's the folder. You just kind of start to do this stuff naturally. So that's definitely the point that we're trying to get to. And we'll continue on in some of the future videos uh, with these skills for sure.